Hello. <laughs> it's Saturday the 24th and it's 21.35, so half nine. I've been watching um, Strictly. Oh, there's some good dancers this time, isn't there? Uh, I think it's going to be a good competition. Uh, even the ones that usually have some really bad ones, but even, they're not even really, really bad. Uh, so it's going to be pretty good. And... Um, I've come upstairs, I'm going to start and I'm going to show you the packaging uh, for the loft. Somebody passed a comment on the way I'm packaging stuff that goes out anyway um, and said they thought it was nice. So I've not shown it for a while. I'm going to show you the packaging using the cards. Uh, that's for clothing and I might do... I might show you some other bits because um, I've put some links below uh, the video of uh, things I'm using. So you'll see me using it along the way. But I get sporadic odd questions about where I've got things from. So I thought I may as well put all the links in on one video. And uh, I've got a couple of new gadgets which I'll show you this week as well. Um, but to start, I only uploaded my other video this afternoon and uh, thank you very much if you've watched that already. Um, and when I started looking at these comments, because I do read them all, I keep saying this, um, and they've, they've really made me laugh. Um, now then, where are they? Let's start. Now, if you've, if you've not already seen the last video, you'll need to go back and see what they're referencing to, but... Um, I introduced people to Greg uh, and these are the, some of the comments I've got I've got uh, Jewellery Sells has said enjoyed the vlog and meeting Greg thanks Sue, so that was that thank you very much uh, Laura Eccleston Seymour commented uh, love the vlog Sue I must say Greg ha does have a cute butt uh, is he single asking for a friend Um, Alison Holden, love, love, love your vlogs, Sue, uh, and kisses, thank you very much. Uh, and how much for Greg? I like my men hard and cold. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> um, uh, any more reference to Greg? Let's have a look. Uh, yes, Joanne D commented, love the way the baby bundle was packaged and the photos of animal and uh, definitely enjoyed Greg's book. <laughs> and then there were other comments which I really appreciate as well. Uh, Yvonne um, saying thank you for the shout out. Absolutely, if you if you've bought from me, if you, I mean obviously um, I don't shout out to anybody that's bought something. If you don't leave a message, I don't know. So that's your way of not getting a shout out. But. Um, if you do want to message and say you're a subscriber, I appreciate it. I think that's lovely. So thanks, Yvonne, for that. Um, uh, Joey Dickinson uh, was one that liked the way the... I did baby clothing and I happened to have got some baby ribbon from when I did the cakes and uh, little gifts and stuff. So I put one of them round it wrapped in cellophane. So she liked that. And that's it. That's it for today so far. So thank you ever so much for leaving comments. And uh, it, yeah, it made me chuckle. So I'm going to set off and show you how I package these things now. Right, this is how we're going to do the clothing. Um, I did a video once before, so if you've seen this already, just skip forward. But... Um, I can't remember which videos I got rid of and which ones I kept anyway. This is clothing and this is how I pack them to go in the loft. So when I've listed them, I uh, copy the title and I print it onto the Dymo labels, which is the smallest size I've got. These are 32 by 57 millimeter. Uh, and I don't use the f the proper dime or I use the um, compatible ones. Um, so there's those. Uh, my label writer for these is the 450 Twin Turbo. Um, I used to need it for the other job because this size I used to use for ingredients to go on the back of stuff, food items. 
and then there was a slightly bigger label which was the I'll show you this size in comparison so if I wanted to do an envelope send abroad or something I could just do the address onto that one but it was big enough for a large letter and uh, comes in handy for labelling boxes and all sorts of things but you don't need to have a twin you could just have a single Dymo labeler if you wanted to do small labels and I also have the Dymo 4XL which is the 4 by 6 inch uh, parcel labels um, I think some people use Zebra but I've never tried Zebra uh, I've only ever had Dymo and it's been super reliable so that's what I use for that so when I've printed one of these off I know I've listed it you see so I use I normally leave these on the Dymo uh, until it's packaged and then I know it's packaged ready to go in the loft so with the clothing I've got four here uh, I won't do them all I don't suppose um, then I've got this paper which is acid free tissue and um, I think it'll be A2 size you know the size you'd use on the flip charts I think that's A2 correct me if I'm wrong um, but I'll use that and then I have shirt cards which is shirt packing cards that you might see in when you're buying yourself or when they're dry cleaned or something uh, and they come with the tab on the top um, and sometimes I cut that tab off and have them like this for jumpers and stuff or dresses. But if it's anything with a collar on, uh, particularly a sort of dress collar, a proper shirt collar, then I use these on there. And then there's bags, there's links below for these bags because these from Amazon have got the health warning on. So if you have to send things to FBA, um, you have to have the health warning. Some people just stick stickers on, but... I used to buy these anyway because I did try Amazon at one bit um, and I've stuck with them because they're quite, um, they were quite good bags anyway. These are 10 by, bear with, uh, these are 10 by 12 uh, and these are for shirts, um, smaller tops, little blouses, things like that. And then I also buy 12 by 16 which are a bit bigger and they tend to do jumpers. So that's that. So what I'll do is I'll make sure I've got one sheet loose. And the shirt I'm going to do at the moment is this one. So I'll button them up and everything. I hope you can still hear me okay. I'll try and adjust the volume if I think it's a bit quiet. Um, I've just put these on auction. piece out now this with the could use one with the piece on the top and I'm going to put it near the near the top there this is just how I do it I fold that down and then in Now the reason I do this is because I stand mine up. If you've ever seen me go in the loft, you'll know that I stand them up on the side um, like that with alphabetically with all their labels showing. And I can find things in a split second. Of course, the only thing you've got to think about if you do your labels like this is not to change the title uh, on your... Um, piece if you're the sort of person that changes titles all the time that might that might throw you a bit of a curveball you might be better to put the SKU number in your label um, oh, that's that add that in there we go it's easier without that paper there, to be fair. Put that on the back of my chair. Yeah. 
It's a sticky. I've got some sticky on my desk for these because they're a right pain. And that one is the uh, Hugo Boss Multicolor Strike. There we go. So I'll just put that on the bottom corner and then they're all stood up like that and I can just flick through like I'm at the library, went through library cards. Um, what's that one? Shall I do another? We've got a blue and black current. There we go. If it's a jacket, I'll do it the same way. Uh, on the last video that I did, I did show a dress and if he was doing a dress, what I would do is put two pieces of uh, tissue on. So, um, I haven't actually got any dresses to package all. All that I've sold at the moment. Uh, but I'll show you with this anyway. Tissue. Right, so I was doing a dress, I would pull two pieces out and just slide an extra piece to the length of the dress so there'd be another bit down there and then again fold it and then when you fold up, when you fold up, I'll show you. So this is going in the Some people just use a folding board. Some people just do it free hand. And to be fair, I've seen some people not bother folding them at all. Uh, but it, you've got to do what you have to with sending out, haven't you? That's that. Oh, shit. Fold that in. Because this is a larger size, the shirt collar on this don't look as pretty as it would on some things. But I'll show you a little bit like how I would do a dress. So, your dress is going to be about under 18 inches long. So, feel for your card, which is about there. Put that there, because you want to allow for the fabric. Fold that up, yeah, as many times as I need up the dress, until you end up up at the top. Yeah, and then I just pull that one out. So they all only get one card. If I'd got something that they paid fifty, sixty pounds for and it was silk and I wanted to keep it very straight, then yes, I'd leave the other card in. But that's a extremely rare occurrence in this house. I'm a bit more middle of the road. That's that. I'm just going to turn that over. In. Get in. Would you be happy to receive that? I would. And I think if you're happy with things when they come out of your packet, you're more likely to be expecting that it's all right and you're not going to start looking for faults inside pockets and inside seams and, you know, bits of naturally occurring loose threads and stuff like that. So, yeah, hopefully they'll be happy with that. That's going in the loft. And that's that. So I won't show you any more shirts. I'm just going to get on uh, and get those done. It's Monday night. I've got two more to do there. Uh, these are packaged up. Um, all the stuff 
I had to move to make some room and now they're extending into the doorway. I've got to sort that out. Uh, the coats are listed. All these lot are listed and they've got to go in the loft. And I was going to um, take you upstairs while I put them away. But to be honest with you, I'm absolutely shattered. Come on, get in. Oh, I've gone at all. Yeah, so they're all done. Uh, that's got to go in the loft. And then what's next for tomorrow? Let's have a plan. Uh, packaging for the loft. Um, there you are. Okay. I'll give everybody a quick woohoo. <laughs> um, oh, right. What else? I've got this coat. That's a kid's coat, though, so I'll put that in there. That's for tomorrow. And a lady's coat. So I'll do that. Um, then I need. I need to get Dolly in here, so, because I want to do that dress, but that means moving this table, so that makes it a bit difficult. So I think what I ought to do tomorrow is bundle these kids, all these baby girls, and get those done. So, yes, I'm going to go and write that on the list. Clothing on the table, baby bundles. Yeah. Night, everybody. See you tomorrow. It's Tuesday dinner. Oh, well, actually, it's a bit after people's normal dinner. It's uh, 25 past one. I decided to have this morning off. Phil was getting up early, so he said, do you want me to leave you in bed? I said no at first, and then I realised I'd got hardly anything to package. So I thought, I'll have this morning as my morning off. So I've just been chilling, watching YouTube videos, and I did a bit of Candy Crush, which I need to delete again, because otherwise I'll just get hooked. Um... But that was relaxing. And uh, two parcels going out, tiny little things. Um, what was it? A cheetah bra uh, brooch and uh, oh, a few Duplo bits, um, which is another story in itself. I'll, I'll fill you in on that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> and I've been thinking, while I've been sitting, thinking time is good sometimes. I've been thinking that I need to do instead of a, a little list of what I need to do today I need to make a full list of plans basically so not not so much a I need to list 10 or I need to put that stock away or I need to fill this rusher but a plan because I'm sick of having to step over stuff you've seen what it's like upstairs and I do a tidy and then it it's a bit of a random tidy, it's for the sake of being tidy. But what I need to do is come up with a plan of major jobs that I want to tackle and uh, that I can tick off when I've done them because I've got to get A, tidy, but B, quicker or probably most importantly, quicker at listing. Um, and I think the biggest problem I've got with listing is not knowing where to start. You know, when you get a bit overwhelmed and it's like, shall I do uh, clothes, shall I do toys, shall I do bric-a-brac, shall I do pictures, shall I do jewellery, shall I do... And it's like, no, I'll just go and have a cup of tea. Um, or even worse, go for a duvet. Because now it's cold, all I want to do is to be warm. So sometimes I'll put eating on, but I've, you've still got that chill. So I either want to go in the bath and soak for an hour or I want to go to bed. So if I keep moving and I keep active whenever I can, that'll be good. So I'm going to start by having something else to eat. I've done well today. I've had melon and an active melon. So I've actually had a bit of breakfast. Uh, so to keep me going now, I've just made myself some toast. Right, this is what I'm sorting. So I put a little label and then do them all in size. So I've still got these to go through uh, for whether the newborn or not to three months. Found a random six to nine months. Um, uh, there's a couple of Christmas tops which I think I'll put in with the not to three baby grows. Uh, and I did the list as far as um, I got the listings done that I drafted. So 
I took those in the loft and um, sorting kids' clothes around and spinning. So this is what I was doing all evening yesterday, was sorting through these um, and I bagged them uh, ready. That's an individual Disney Parks uh, hoodie. And then the rest of them, I've got my labels. I've got these are um, toddler and older. So these go up to age 11 to 12. So some are little bundles uh, and some of them are massive. Oh, some of them are massive so i've got all that linen basket look is overflowing with uh lots so that's within the plan of, of knowing what i'm actually listing uh, i think i'm gonna have to pull pull this out right i've got a bag going for charity shop stuff um some of the kids clothes in there are there's only one of each age and stuff. I can't be bothered selling them separately. So that's that. If I pull this out of the way, I'm going to have an avalanche of jewellery in a second. Hang on. Right. Now. Doing anything at the minute, I feel like I've got a tent and weight on my back oh god anyway i had to put it there because phil likes to be able to shut this door <clears throat> i'm just going for a breather i'll see in a sec right this is all the stuff i hoisted up um and need to send the shirt. I think it's the multicoloured. Oh, is it multicoloured one I want? Yeah. Yeah. So I need to send that one. I'll stick. Oh, the handle's broke. That's rare, isn't it? I'm in my key, man. Um, shift them there. I need, I need a, oh god, there's an antique jug and uh, I've no idea whether I've wrapped it or put it on the shelf because I forgot to put a skew number. Um, no, it won't be down there, right, so it's going to be in here. That's a... Uh, Antique jug somewhere. There it is. Antique hand painted jug. I need that. Also need a job like a jewellery. Um be okay. This is uh Bracelets and that. Need that. Need that. Need that. Uh, anything over here? No, I just need some kids stuff. You see why I need to tidy? Because I can't get round. Oh, I can't get around anything. I'll be over there a second. Uh, kids' clothes. Next girl's age nine. Where did I put? Oh, there you now. Kids' clothes. Crinkle dress, uh, pudsy. There we are. Girls pudsy top. And right, so jug, 
top jewelry bundle. Girls put in yeah. That's that. And then the rest of the bits I've got to send our jewelry. Uh, that seems like a nice thick. That's a nice thick box for me jug, isn't it? Love that. I'll just wrap the jewellery in the top. Yeah, that's all I need. I've just filmed a whole section and realised I'd even got my jumper on inside out, so that's so shoddy I'm deleting it. Uh, so there'll be a bit of a jump to this, but I said I'd um, fill you in on the uh, Duplo side of things. What it was, um, oh, before I start, let me just show you this. Somebody on the chat with Carla was saying that it's really annoying that she's got um, I don't know if it's because she's got two accounts but she goes in a different way um, and doesn't get the same screen so I'm assuming she gets a screen like this and then on others gets the hub so I've at the moment got two accounts and in one of them when I want to get to the hub I just click on my eBay but if I click on my eBay in this this is what I get so difficult to work with um, I don't get to the hub so on this one I have to click on here um, click on selling and then it takes me to the hub now this shop as you can see has hardly done anything and the reason for that is that I had um, a store that I used to do the sugar craft and sell on and then I decided when when I started selling tat, I overlapped um, the sugar with the uh, reselling until the reselling took off a bit and then I closed the sugar shop down. But I used this sugar shop for a parts shop um, and I've got a lot of multi-listings on it where people could choose the track parts. Uh, they could choose Duplo parts like for the train, uh, number train parts went really well. Uh, Playmobil, um, things like this, individual flowers. See, there's lots of multi-listings on. Um, but a lot of them have ended up with not much left on. And um, as you can see there, look, there's not much left on it for sale. And without going to the car book, I don't want to be sniping on eBay. I've not got time for that. Uh, without going to car books and buying massive bagfuls, um, it's it's ended up not viable. I, w I kept it going and I really wanted to build it because uh, I'm going to show you up here. All these uh, are what I'm going to list as separate parts, but um, it's one of my objectives in my plan is to get rid of this lot. So what I decided last week was I would close the shop down so I don't pay a subscription anymore. So I was making about £100 net on it and it was just ticking over nicely, just odd, odd bits going out. Um, so I shut the shop down, so I'm now just left with um, a few items left in there. Um, and I'm going to get rid. So uh, I'll just spin you around and show you where everything is. Where everything is in this store this was the parts store because there was odd bits going out some people had ordered 27 quids but there are odd little bits but they were handy here they were just behind me and i've got duplo lego playmo whatever so these were rammed full of bits when i started the, the store and they've emptied and filled up a couple of times but like this one for example these were bags full of furniture and house, uh, plants and flowers, things with wheels and stuff. So this was random. Um, now I've got two job lots left uh, and I've got the other little bits in there. So that's, I mean, well, there's hardly anything in that one. Um, and this is the other duplo. All these bags were full and I mean like rammed full of numbers and Parts and plates, these are all the set numbers, so this is the multi listing. Then you can see like what's left, what's left in odd things now. So, um, like bag A, that would have been all the uh, 
picture bricks and stuff. So they were great for people to buy and, and complete their sets, I suppose. But yeah, so that, there's hardly anything in there. So all that lot would combine into to one. Um, but I'm going to job lot them. Uh, Playmo, this is the one, two, three. I think the only thing I've really got left here is a Noah's Ark. Uh, and then some odd bits. So that's another job lot there. Lego. Yeah. These were when I did um, job lots and auctioned them. And they're in here. And the only thing left in here now is some padded envelopes. <laughs> so, more. Oh, I've done that one. Uh, what's this one? Now, these are unlisted. Uh, I was putting all my Harry Potters in here. I did sell a few sets off, uh, like this I've put in here now. For this set I need um, Order of the Phoenix and Half Book Prince, and I've said either, so that means either um, hardback or paperback. Uh, I've got Lego uh, instructions in there, which I could sell separately. So these, these are all unlisted stock. So if I keep this whole thing for unlisted, um once i've tidied up i can get these shifted these are my shirt cards uh, which i've shown you uh the tape oh, i've put a link to the tape i use vibac uh tape i find it's really really strong tape so they can all get moved and then in here uh unlisted ah oh, this is the sort of um lot that i don't really want to venture in and i don't know why they're in there because they are things like uh computer games and ds games and stuff so oh i better put them on my list but still uh knitting patterns i was selling knitting patterns separately i bought massive job lot uh and they've been selling nicely but there's not many of them left now either. And then the rest in there, oh God, I can't tell you. There's net curtains and all sorts. So I'll tell you how random it is. And then up here, those are the games that I'm now going to sell off. I mean, I've got some empty boxes, like I've got empty chess box for uh, Lego, uh, empty Harry Potter game, Hogwarts game box. And then the rest of them are games which I was... Um, I mean, I gave our Benjamin a load the other day, to be honest. Uh, but I'll probably sell them off as just spares. Is the thing. Then they can all go in the loft, you see. So I've got that space up there. And then the only other things on that shop is a, a few of these. Uh, and they've been condensed down. They're minifigures. Um, so the ones with MTV and MF and whatever, uh, they're listed. Uh and the others are incomplete, needing finishing. So, I mean, that, they're all my other Lego bits. So, they can all be combined down into job lots, I think, and that'll get rid of that. Um, I'll show you the plan. Now, you need the objective. You need to know where you want to be at the end. It's no good just going off running about randomly, is it? Which is 90% of my time is what I do. So objective is for quicker listing and ease of use. So I'm not falling over. I'm not twisting my back. I'm not spending ages looking for stuff. Um, so both of those have worked together uh, ultimately so I can make more money. Because I'm actually selling quicker than I'm listing at the minute. Uh, so that's why I've got empty shelves upstairs. Um, so I've split that down into tasks. So I've got tasks for this office. Tasks for the loft and tasks for the listing room, which is that back bedroom. Um, and so far, I've worked down here, so I want to identify the stock in the parts shop and then pull it all out. Right, and then I want to job lot those listings in the main sh uh, store. That will clear space for unlisted stock and then... Whatever space I end up with, I can allocate each niche a particular area. So, um, and then I can put any unlisted in workable amounts within those areas. So, for example, this lot here, 
I'm thinking I'm going to use for jewellery unlisted, but I'll use all the boxes that come off Cass, um, all these. And I'm going to lay, like when I sorted the Lego, I'm going to fill this worktop with those. And then I'm going to pull out one box of jewellery at a time. So all this down here is jewellery, look. And all this on here is jewellery. There's a there's an orange box full and another box there. And there's bangles there and then all that in there is jewellery. So uh, I'm going to sort this as the plastic box is full and I'll probably do brooches, necklaces, earrings, uh, bangles, something like that. So that's the plan for that. Um, right, other than that, I've not come up with anything yet. So you'll have to watch this space. I'm not going to keep documenting as I do it because I want to crack on and get it done. Otherwise, it's going to be like March and I'll say, right, I'm just doing this list. <laughs> um, well, why I'm going to do, I'm going to end on this video by showing you these gadgets that I bought. Um so I've got a, uh, what do they call it, magnifying loop. And I bought myself a light, uh, which is a macro lens as well. So I'll have a look at that and see if that works. Uh, and that's particularly for taking uh, shots of hallmarks and stuff like that. So, yeah, watch this space. Um, key ring magnets. If you're going to sell jewellery, one of the minimum things that you need is a magnet. And uh, this I keep on my key ring, and this is how strong it is, look. So that it's holding all my keys up. Let's see if I can get any more on there. Look. That's how strong that magnet is. So, yeah. And I'm just going to pop upstairs and show you some other bits. So, I've got my jewellery bits in here. Scales. Probably don't need scales unless you're selling something like precious metal or silver or, or gold, but they're just cheap ones. I've got this diamond selector, which you'll have seen in the previous video if you've been watching the uh, jewellery hauls. Uh, I showed you me testing. Testing some uh, gems with that. I wouldn't say that's essential to you, really, but... Um, the main thing that that shows me is that I'm not uh, going to look any further and spend any more time on looking at a stone that definitely comes up as glass. Uh, I've got my acid testing kit, but to be honest, I don't do very well with the gold testing because my eyes are shocking. So I've invested in another um, loop. Uh, my original loop is a... Uh, it's lost. That's where it is. No, oh, it's here. My original loop is a 30 times, and I didn't realise until in the chat, I think it was DBG or... Oh, sorry if I've got that wrong, but anyway, somebody said I could get a 40 times loop, so I've just ordered one of those. I've got Simichrome polish, which is to test for uh, Bakelite. Um... UV light and with that I can check for amber um, rubies rubies of uh, fluoresce as well uh, no, go. I've got this for ring sizing uh, and somebody will be able to tell you in the chat what that's called I can't remember um, gold testing stone Right, and these, these gadgets, so uh, I've got this 40 times loop which has got a light on, um, which is really good. It's got two LED, two LED lights on there, so that's really bright. That'll be a good look and even see uh, print dots on paper look. So that's that. Uh, and then I bought this. 
which is um, so I can stand you on here. Just bear with. Bear with me. See if I can stand you on here. Look, it's all a bit haphazard, isn't it? Uh, so this is the RK um, 19S. And it's a spotlight uh, camera with uh, macro and um, it's a macro wi and wide angle and zoom lens. So you've got a light on it there. Which is quite bright. And then the lens is at the bottom. One turn off. The lens is at the bottom, there's two screwed on there, and then there's an extra one here. Now, let me try and remember. Right, the top one is a wide angle, and then within that is also a macro lens in there. So, I can clip this onto the top over the... Um, lens on my phone so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip all three on and then show you just to show you the change so from the wide angle there hold hold the bottom one twist the top off I can't do it uh. yeah Alright, so I've left that macro lens on and I'm going to put that over the uh, the thing on my phone and we'll see what I can see. don't know whether it's going to actually show up on video. I might have to take a couple of photos and pop those in after. <laughs> 